Me too. Tell, <laughs> tell us, tell us how you came to Orphan's Hands, Julia. Um, a first story is very interesting, in fact. My story is very interesting. Uh, I didn't know that I was going to be here. I didn't know that I come here. I didn't know that I was going to be here. And I uh, didn't I wasn't expected that I'll study anything. Eu doar am finished my high and I wanted to go somewhere else. I just to go somewhere I just finished my high school and I wanted to go somewhere abroad to work. And uh, it was a single way to live for me. Because I understood that I didn't have money to study and I couldn't even help my family to live. So because I understood I didn't have money, my family didn't have money to help me to, to study. Dar eu mă rugam mult pentru asta. But I was praying for it. Și am zis, Doamne, dacă tu mă vezi undeva acolo să lucrez, fac se voi, dar dacă tu vrei că eu să am un viitor frumos și dacă tu mă iubești atât de mult cum spune cuvântul tău, ajută-mă să-mi fac studiile și să pot să trăiesc o viață mai bună. So I was praying to God and I told him, God, if you want me to go somewhere abroad, uh, to work, I'll do it. But you know, my dream is to study and uh, I have no possibility. So if you want, just please help me to do it. Uh, and God a pe Catalina. <laughs> gave uh, to her life, in her life, my me. <laughs> Uh, ea spunea, nu, Iulia, înveți, eu spunea, tu în viață, So I was already here in Orphan Sands and I told her about it. So about this chance to come here. Da, asta e. Uh, noi am trăit într-o familie, de fapt, unde permanent a fost și băutură și violență. So my, uh, my father was drinking all the time and he was very violent. Uh, Una din cele mai mari probleme erau numai jocurile de azar. He was playing games uh, for money with his friends. Și din copilărie, eu și frații mei au trebuit să supere toate consecințele. So, uh, we as kids, so her family uh, didn't have money for food because he was losing all the money on these games. Eu eram destul de mică, dar nu mi-am tăiesc când el venea acasă. I was uh, small and we were living in an apartment of one room. Uh, Julia, her mom, uh, and two brothers and one sister, just one room, nothing else. So in this room, uh, they had the kitchen, uh, dormitories, uh, everything. Wow. And she's remembering how uh, her father was coming home. She permanent era beat. She, uh, he was always drunk. She very violent and very violent. Mama era bolnavă și din cauza asta el nu bătea cu mama. He, uh, her mom was was and, she, and is sick, so she can't uh, get uh, go any, anywhere from the house. She's just sitting inside. Cel mai des ținta nervului lui eram eu de fapt. Always he was violent just with me. Și eu uzeam de mulți copii care erau bătuți acasă, care erau pedepsiți. And uh, I was hearing always about many children that were beaten at home. And so, Permanent, mă întrebam, doamne, dar de ce eu sunt pedepsită fără ca să mereți sau fără ca să știu pentru ce? And uh, they knew, these kids knew why they, they are beaten, but I never knew it. So he was beating me uh, almost every day and I didn't know for what. El putea pur și simplu să vină acasă, să mă vadă și să nu păstească, să promească. He was vadă. just coming inside and uh, if he saw me, he was beating me for no reason. Și ce mi amintesc, pur și simplu mă trezeam plină de sânge. And sometimes sure. I was waking up, uh, feeling me very bad. Uh, all of my body was uh, was uh, pain, uh, right. just pain, okay. and I was uh, full of blood everywhere. She, de ce nu eram creștină, știam de existența lui Dumnezeu și întrebam, Domnul, de ce suntem atât de nefericit? And uh, even if her family and she, uh, we weren't Christians, uh, she was, uh, she knew that God exists. And she was asking God, why is it happening? Wow. Why she can't be happy as many other, other kids? Uh, wow. So my biggest, her biggest dream uh, was to come home and there to be peaceful. Uh, mama era bolnavă și nu putea să stea în fața lui tata când el 
încerca să ne bată. Uh, Hema was sick and uh, sitting in the bed, laying in the bed and uh, uh, she can't do anything uh, for to protect Julia. Uh, ea, de fapt, la fel, crescând într-o familie unde permanent a fost violență și uh, bătaie. Uh, her mom grew up in a, family, in a family where her dad was also violent, so it was like something normal for her. Și ea suferea că noi trăim prin, trecem prin ceea ce a trecut și ea. Uh, she was suffering because her kids had the similar family as uh, she had. Uh, ea s-a căsătorit cu toată când avea 20 de ani. She married uh, her, uh, Julia's father when uh, uh, she was just 20 years. Și atunci tatăl meu era un om diferit. But, and he was a different, different person. Uh, uh, ei au dorit să aibă un copil, însă medicii spuneau lui mama că nu o să aibă copii niciodată. So, uh, her mom uh, is diabetic and she uh, has almost 200 kilograms and uh, she is... Uh, Doctors told her that she can't have kids, but Julia was born from Dar, a miracle. Uh, peste un timp, uh, m-am născut eu. And when she was born, și frații mei, and uh, then uh, had two siblings, uh, însă din cauza la lipsă de bani și neajunsuri, tata a plecat peste hotare. And uh, soon after they, uh, they were born, uh, her father left the family. Și ne-a lăsat, nu s-a mai întors înapoi. And he never came back. Wow. Uh, noi am rămas singuri și îmi amintesc că era o perioadă când noi nu aveam ce mânca și din cauza că nu aveam cu ce plăti comunalele noi ne stingea lumina. And uh, they didn't have money, as her mother wasn't working, uh, they didn't have money to pay bills, to buy bread, to buy uh, anything, food or like this. Și eu mi-am închis că mergeam la vicini, era iarnă, era fric. And in winter time, it was so cold and she was going to the doors of her neighbors. Și rugam, puteți să intrați, vă rog frumos, în prelungitori, ca să trăgeam lumina acasă, să putem să punem căldură. So they didn't have light, they didn't have any source of uh, warmness in, in the house, and they were asking the neighbors to, to uh, help them, to give the light. Wow. Frații mei erau mici și noi toți trebuia să stăm îmbrăcați în scurte, în, în, din cauza că era foarte frig în casă. So they, uh, they had to wear warm clothes all the time in the house because it, it was as cold inside as outside. Yeah. Toate casa o puneam cu lumânări, că să fie oricare sursă de lumină și de căvură. So the single source of light in the house were candles and it was happening in 21st second, uh, century. Dar asta oh, nu era de fapt de ajuns. But it was and cold, how, very cold how, anywhere. How how yeah. is her life? How is her life today different? Cum este viața ta acum? Bine cuvântată. Blessed, mm, fericită, uh, happy. Eu pur și simplu mulțumesc să Dumnezeu că m-a ajutat să ajung aici și să mă realizez visurile care de fapt credeam că sunt posibile. God help her and she is in an amazing place right now and uh, she can uh, all her dreams came true she is studying she has a warm house and a beautiful one and she has enough food for uh, every day amazing. this is this is the miracle go ahead it is a miracle it's a miracle i am so proud of you juliana i'm just so thankful for you And to watch what God has done in your life. And what happens is you don't see this. Explain this to our um, Carolina. She doesn't see this. But we notice her changing as we, as we know her. And you know what's crazy? For as much as Liliana has been through, she's the one, she's always smiling. Yeah. That is she's true. always happy. Yeah. Hi, yes. girls. And I'm so glad when we were there, poor Liliana was in quarantine. She had COVID. So I'm glad to see they finally let her out of her room. Oh, God, I love her. Let me explain this. You, if you can imagine in Moldova right now, um, you know how bad it is here, the pandemic is here. Can you imagine being in Moldova in a pandemic? And what we take for medical normal is, is, just, not, is just not there. And um, when Chrissy and Meldy were over in Moldova, fixing up the most recent house at Vatra village. 
um, Juliana had, she had um, COVID and she was isolated in one of the rooms in the house and we, they were feeding her. Yeah, we just saw the girls taking food and putting it at our door, taking our meals up to her. It was crazy. <laughs> and um, I'm so glad you're feeling better, uh, Juliana. And we are so proud of you. We are so proud of you. Look how quickly they did that tree. Look at that. Takes, many, takes me all night. <laughs> many hands, make many hands work. make lights work. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to me, we need you to help us. We have a container full of clothes you just heard Juliana say that it was so cold inside her house. It was the same inside as outside. That is normal in many, many homes in Moldova. In Kishnau, the capital, you, there's McDonald's and Pizza Hut and Kentucky Fried Chicken. You go two miles out of the city and there's no street lights, there's no sidewalks, there's no roads, there's no water. indoor plumbing. Yeah. It is literally going back a hundred years and poverty is grinding at the souls of these people. And in those villages that are families at the point of breaking, point of giving away their kids because they can't feed them anymore. Kids leave, as you just heard Juliana, go to the West because they can work there. And in the West, they get the worst jobs. They have the, 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 the lowest pay, but it's better than staying and starving in Moldova. And we, we go to these villages. These kids are now missionaries and they go out and care and love for love on people that have nothing and bring them coal and bring them wood and bring them clothes and bring them blankets and transform a, a life in one visit. And that is what you can help us do. And, and our goal, we have, a, we have enough stuff, enough supplies, clothes and blankets and things to, to, to fill a whole container, 40 foot container, to send to Moldova to give these kids something to give out. For all the will in the world, if they don't have the supplies, they can't go. And um, it's costing $9,000 for a container, just for the container, not for the, the stuff, just for the container. We have everything ready on pallets. Philip can show you a picture right now of the pallets sitting, waiting. That is the pallets as they are sitting right now. And we are $9,000 away from putting that stuff, all of that clothes and all the things that are necessary into a container and getting it to Moldova. And you can be a miracle worker today on this Giving Tuesday. Patricia from Texas just gave $257. Patricia, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You are making miracles happen. You are being part of a miracle. If, if 100 people could give $90, we could pay for this container. If you break down the pallets, there are 20 pallets in a, in a 40 foot container, which means each one of them is about, is about $500. And if you have a church that you would like to sponsor one of the pallets and be a part of this, you can allow us to send this pallet, this container next week. Everything's ready to go. We just need the funds to send it. And um, Barry from Texas has just given $52. Diane has just given $100. Thank you so much. And you can give right now on www.theorphanshands.org forward slash give. Very simple. Theorphanshands.org forward slash give. And it's a secure site. You can give by your charge card. And listen, in this day of, of, of anger and and bitterness that our country is struggling in. Why don't you break through out of your circumstance and say to the devil and say to the Lord Jesus, I'm going to give beyond the borders of my walls and I'm going to reach out into someone else's world. The folks say, well, oh, there's people in America in need. Let me tell you something. These folk is a different level of need and we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Jesus is going to all the world and preach the gospel. We won't be blessed just by helping ourselves. We are blessed when we fulfill the commandment of Christ and that is to go to all the world and preach the gospel. And these kids use this stuff that we are going to send them, the, the, the warmth. Can you imagine living in a home, a widow with no heat and no, not not enough sufficient blankets on your bed and you live in the world of, of death all the time and a knock comes to your door and someone says hey we're from the orphan's hands and we want to help you and as you saw in valentina's video wash wash her first of all first time in three years clean her home give her food change her bed and transform her life and that woman right now sitting in a home in moldova is one word she, she can't speak 
but you can whisper the name of Jesus. And that's what we're doing 